Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a 3.5 liter uh, Honda, well it's a Saturn, but it's a Honda Acura motor. And I'm going to be doing a timing belt. I'm going to show you how to do that timing belt and how to get it done. Now there's some going to be some differences because it's a Saturn. Uh, there's no power steering pump, you know, PCM's in a different place, but things like that. But the timing belt is still the same. Still the same exact engine, just a different uh, platform. But before I do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. All right, let's check it out. All right, here we go. Timing belt on a 3.5 liter Honda or Acura. Now this is a Saturn, so it's going to look a lot different. So if you have a Honda or Acura, you are going to have a power steering pump right in the valley. All right, it's going to mount up. And it's going to be in the way. You're going to have to unbolt it and move it out of the way because you have to get to the engine mount and the engine mount bracket. So there's a lot of different models of, Sat of Acuras and Hondas. The Saturn, the PCM is back there on the side wall right there. In a lot of Hondas and Acuras, the PCM is actually over here and you have to take the PCM out. You have to take a bracket out because you have to be able to get to the engine mount. On this one, all you have to do is take the airbox out, take the PCM out, and you can get to it. Once you've gained access, you're going to take off this front cover. Now, right there, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so right there is a rubber plug. And you can pop this plug out, all right, and you rotate it down. And you turn the engine over until there's a one. You turn the engine over until there's a one on the cam sprocket and it will line up in the window. And then you can't see it from here, but then there's a, a mark down on the balancer that will line up. Once you see the one on this window, it's not mandatory that you, that you set it top dead center before you take it apart. Once you take it apart, you can do it and you use the marks inside the engine, but this gets you close. Once you do that, you're gonna take off this front cover here. You're gonna take off that rear cover there. Now there's a wiring harness that goes up in the cover. You have to pop that out and probably disconnect uh, some sensors back there to gain access to be able to get the harness out of the way. The front one here, the only thing you have to do is you have this green clip. You gotta pop that out for the alternator. Once you do that, you're gonna support the engine and you're gonna remove this engine mount. All right, so for this back cover, this harness right here, it sits in a slot in the rear timing cover and it's kind of tight to get it out. You're probably gonna to have to disconnect some connectors in the back that go down. There's about three different sensors back there. Once you disconnect those, you're able to get this out and get it disconnected. All right, so for the connectors right here, that button right there, uh, on the harness side of the connector, you push that button in, and then you're able to slide the connector up or down or sideways. They go all different ways. So you got to make sure that you're looking at it and pulling it the correct way. Once you do that, you release it from its brackets, and then you're able to get the harness moved and get the cover off. All right, so you're going to remove this cover, but when you put it back on, it's got little little channels in the cover, and you've got to make sure that you get them in the right spot so the cover pops back on correctly, so that way you don't break it. All right, now the rear one is way more tricky. You want to look at the rear one, how the, how the channels are. The rear one, the harness can get in the way, and you can easily not put this cover back on correctly. So you really got to make sure that you get it in, and it will set right in. You should not have to force it. And then there's the there's what the front one looks like. All right, so if you work on a lot of Hondas, Toyotas, things like that, you want to get weighted sockets. They look like this. Uh, unfortunately, when I bought mine, mine were snap-on, and they were three-quarter drive, so I have to use an adapter, so I lose torque in that, and sometimes it won't take them off. But some of the, uh, the other brands that I've borrowed from people that were half-inch drive took them off no problem. Aries or Astro just came out with like a whole set of like five, but they're out of stock right now. I have the 19 and 22 from Snap-on. I'll probably be getting the whole set. All right, so now this is a Saturn, so I have a lot more room. Hondas and Acuras have less, but what I recommend getting is it's an air tool. 
It's a little tiny air ratchet. It fits in the palm of your hand. This one's Matco. Uh, there's a lot of other brands. My coworker just got an AirCat. They work great. Now, the socket that you want is you want to make sure that you have these universal sockets. Now, you don't want to use them for everything, but they have much more movement than this ball style here. Uh, you want to make sure that you buy them from the truck uh, somewhere that comes around and can warranty easily because they're, they're going to wear out a lot more and you're going to have to get them warrantied. So you want to make sure that you have a good quality one. So between this and that universal... You're going to be able to get her done and get into anywhere with this. All right. So that's what the engine looks like when it's all uh, before we're going to take it apart. Now, this little spacer right here, this goes in between the crank sprocket and the balancer. Now, this is actually on, on Hondas and Toyotas. I put it inside the balancer. The reason I do this is because I don't want to forget it. Now, if it was smaller than the timing cover... I, when I, I would flip the timing cover over and I would set it down. That way, when I pick up the timing cover, I cannot forget it. Now, sometimes this is the crank pickup in Toyotas. And I actually forgot to put them on because it got misplaced and I was in a hurry. So that's why I put it in the cover. And on this one, it goes just like that. All right, so this engine has uh, mounts on all sides. So you can actually just put a jack under the engine, support the engine, remove this mount, and then it will sit without a jack. Now you can see I have my timing marks lined up. I, I painted the, the sprocket and also the belt before I took it off. And you also saw in the crank how I had all of the marks paint marker. All right, once you've removed, you're going to go ahead and need to remove this bracket right here. There's uh, some 14 millimeters and also a 10 millimeter holding that that uh, harness there. All right, so I've marked all the sprockets and I'm gonna confirm that the engine is timed on all of the, the cam and uh, all that. So before you mark your belt, you need to confirm the engine is actually in time because if you paint marker your belt and you transfer it to the new one and the engine was off one, let's say the crank was off one tooth, then now your engine's going to be off. So you need to confirm that you're lined up. Then you're going to paint marker your pulley, paint marker your belt, and then transfer your marks. All right, so making this video was really crazy, and I had a really hard time filming everything the way I wanted to. Uh, but disassembly. All right, so a Honda will tell you for the, the, the before you disassemble it, you're going to have it all timed, and so it's all going to be at, on, in time. And Honda will tell you to take out a battery, uh, one of the battery uh, hold down bolts, the long uh, hold down, and to thread that in from behind to hold the tensioner in place. Don't do it. It's a pain in the butt. It takes forever. I don't ever follow that step. What I do is I hold the tensioner. So the tensioner is at an angle like this, and you got two tens like that. I hold the tensioner up, and I just hold it tight, and I use my other hand with a cordless ratchet, and I zip the bolts out. And then I slowly pull the tensioner away, and then the the uh, the pulley will just fall away, or actually like this way. I think it, I think it goes down like that. Anyways, tensioner's off. Take that off. Then go ahead and slip your belt off. Unbolt your 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 can't remember your tensioner. You know your tensioner uh, pulley assembly, uh, and then also remove your idler and your water pump. Going to get everything cleaned up, and we're going to reassemble that. Let me show you how to reassemble it. All right, so now you want to go ahead and get this all clean. What I like to use is little Scotch-Brite pads. I get a big rectangle. I cut them up. I use some brake clean and get it all cleaned up. Make sure it's ready to go for the water pump. All right, so most of our timing belts are continental. Uh, it's affordable, and it works. Uh, inside the kit, it comes with everything you need, all the pulleys, all the sprockets, timing belts. Uh, and tensioner. So we got the water pump out and we got the seal. Now the seal never works the way that they plan. They plan for these little pointers inside the channel to hold the seal in place. The way the seal is stored, it's usually distorted. It never works. So I use Sil Glide and I put it in all the channels and then that helps hold the seal in place. So that way it doesn't move when I put the water pump in. Now this is the Sil Glide that I'm using right now. I used to use Napa Sil Glide, but this is actually good because I got a big giant tube. And you can see I have it in all the channel and the O-ring stayed in place. 
So I'm going to be able to put it on. It's not going to move. All right, so you've got your water pump up. You've got five bolts. We're going to torque those to 106 inch pounds. Now, it's very important that you make sure your torque wrench is, is working like it should. On the tool trucks, they have a calibration checker and you can use it to calibrate your, to check your torque wrenches and it ch checks it on all the, all the ranges. Uh, for years, I had a Napa one and that was my inch pound torque wrench. And I just felt it wasn't torquing properly on the lower torque scale, on the to lower torque scale. Uh, I would torque plastic intakes and it just didn't feel right. And I checked it and it was way off. So now I have a snap on uh, inch pound torque wrench. So make sure your torque wrench is of good quality. All right, so the idler pulley that goes under the water pump, that one, you need to put some uh, some uh, Loctite on, on the threads. It goes right there. All right, if you ever have a bolt break or come out really hard, you want to make sure that you have a thread restore kit, a thread repair kit, not a tap. A tap will cut new threads. Use this, run it through the hole, make sure it works. I had a bolt break. It took five hours to get it out. I used this, cleaned up the threads. Everything was fine. All right, so the idler under the water pump, you want to make sure you put some Loctite on the, on the threads, and you're going to go to 33 foot-pounds. Make sure it's torqued properly. All right, for your pulley, for your tensioner, you're going to take your old one, and you're going to slide the, you're going to take the bolt out of the top. You're going to slide the sleeve out of the back. Make sure you clean it up, wipe it up real good. Uh, you can even put a little bit of lube on there. Slide it into your new one, put the bolt on, and bolt it up. All right, before you bolt the pulley on, you want to bolt your tensioner up. This is your new tensioner. If you did not do a whole kit and you're just doing a belt, uh, your tensioner will have to be depressed in a vise and you will have to find a pin to slide in. We're going to go ahead and bolt this tensioner up to the engine before we put the idler on. All right, so we've got the tensioner bolted up. I don't torque this one. All I do is bolt it. Is this, I just tighten it down snug. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put our tensioner pulley in. We're going to slip that on that of the water pump and we're going to tighten this one down. All right, so here's a tech tip right here. Every time you put pulleys on or tensioners or anything, really, when you bolt up a movable part, you want to make sure that you tighten it up. Once you bolt it down, that you move it in its moving position. This one, the whole assembly uh, moves. And that's what the tensioner does. And this one is just a stationary idler pulley. Make sure it spins. If you cockeye them, they won't turn. All right, I've made a previous video about this before. Every single timing belt I, I do, I take a Sharpie. This one is an oil-based Sharpie brand. And uh, I, have, I have like multiple different colors. Uh, I use this to mark the belt. And also because it's oil-based, if you use a little bit of oil, it'll still mark. So now you can see that I've marked my old belt and I laid my, I'm going to lay my new one across on top of the old one and mark it. And then once I've got all the way around, I'm going to roll around one more time and confirm that every mark lines up. That way I don't have any issues. Before you put your belt on, make sure you spray all your coolant from your water pump off. Spray some brake clean, make sure there's no coolant. Hang your belt down from above and get it lined up with the crank. All right, so you're going to go ahead and put it on the inside of both of the pulleys, the tensioner pulley and the idler pulley. You're going to bring it around the backside cam because it has a lip on it. You're going to line it up. Make sure it's lined up with your mark. Bring it around the water pump. The water pump also has a lip. Then at this point, you're going to have to slip it off of the idler, get it lined up on the cam sprocket. Once it's lined up on the cam sprocket, you're going to pull it and it will slip on to the idler pulley. All right, at this point, we're going to confirm that our belt lines up with all of our sprockets where we put it. So on, the, on a Honda, you have a lot less room. You have to use a mirror to see this one. That's why I marked the sprocket also, because the sprocket will line up with the belt, makes it easier to see. I'm going to come over to the front one, double check that one. You're not concerned with the sprocket lining up with the engine, because remember, we had to move the belt, the tensioner, the pulleys, all that. That will line up when we're all done. Now we're going to go down and check the crank. Now one of the things I like to do on some vehicles is I like to put a different mark on the crank. So that way I can reference where the crank is. And I also mark the engine. So I know that where it lines up 
that's where the crank sprocket should be. Now we got to pull the pin on the tensioner. On a Honda and Acura, you can use dikes and pull it out. Uh, on this one, I had to actually use some big pliers. You put it up against the pulley and you use the leverage and you pull it out little by little and it will pop out. And a lot of times you can hear the tensioner like a little thunk uh, when it comes out. All right, so you'll be able to see right here that the tensioner is actually up against the pulley assembly. So now we're going to roll the engine over two full revolutions and we're going to confirm that everything is lined up. Now the keyway on the crank is where the mark is on the crank sprocket and you can see the mark on the engine right there and we're going to check so you can see right there how it should line up. Yeah, it's probably a little bit off. Then we're going to check uh, both cams. Now sometimes the cams will appear that they're a half a tooth off. There's no such thing as a half a tooth. It's either a whole tooth or it's not. This one is in perfect time. You just can't see it right. All right, so now that I showed you how to do this timing belt, uh, you should feel very uh, very comfortable doing this. Uh, also, one other thing is uh, if you're ever gonna, uh, if you're gonna be adjusting valves on a 3.5 liter Honda Acura, which should be done at 100,000, that front little window on the front timing cover, you pull that back and, um, and whatever number is on the cam, that's the number that you adjust. So if you have it on number one, you adjust number one valves, if you have it on, like I said, two, three, it goes in the firing order. I can't remember what it is, but like it's like one, three, five, you know, two, four, whatever, you know what I mean? But the, but the order goes in the way that you adjust the valves. So keep that in mind when you're adjusting valves on these Hondas and Acuras. Uh, other than that, I mean, it should be pretty straightforward. It's not super difficult as long as you don't have a bolt break. I actually had a bolt break on the tensioner. The bottom bolt on the tensioner, which goes into the block, uh, broke off and I had about this much sticking out and, uh, oh, it took like five hours of, of trying to weld nuts on there and three different people helping me. And it was, it was quite the ordeal, but we got it out and that is the key. So luckily it was the Saturn. I had a lot more room, you know, I mean, I had like this much room between the fender, you know, the whatever and the engine versus a Honda and Acura where you have a lot less room. So lucky for that, it made things a lot, it made things work better. So thanks for watching the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe button, and hit the bell so you're notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also check out my playlist. I have a diesel playlist, things like that. Uh, you can kind of scroll through some videos that might spark your interest. Thanks for watching. Check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic, show you tools, show you cars, show you all kinds of cool stuff. Also check out my merchandise store where you can get a t-shirt, coffee cup, and support the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.